ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dr. Martin Scott. Put your hands together as CTO and Senior Vice President of Rambus Incorporated. In the interest of time, it's straight away over to you, Dr. Martin, to take us through. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm also cognizant of the fact that I'm the last hurdle between you and the award ceremony. So uh, we will get right into it today. Um, knowing that there would be a number of very technical, innovative talks um, that highlight some of the great advances in technology, some of the challenges and opportunities that both India and the global world have, I took a slightly different approach, um, trying to kind of pull these ideas together at the end of the day and provide maybe a slightly different mindset of the way to focus innovation. So, so you might say, what do you mean focus innovation? One theme that we have not talked much about today is how to choose what not to work on. Actually choosing problems that have relevance is probably in, in, in our mind the most important connection to creating value. And whether it's in the India domestic market or the global semiconductor market, we have to be extremely careful to, I think, go deeper in the user experience, pull it back to what the inventions required are in, in order to unlock uh, continued business opportunity. Because at the end of the day, we have to make money throughout the value chain or this engine does not keep running. So let's, a uh, number of trends that have set up opportunities for R&D and innovation, um, you know, again, both, both here and, and worldwide. There are nine key mega trends that we have to just remind ourselves that set up the business opportunities that we're all here to try to, uh, try to access. The first one, a look at the globe and how much of the globe is connected either wirelessly or, or, or wired. You see India has tremendous opportunity that remains to connect people, uh, particularly in rural areas. Um, there are computers everywhere. The World Wide Web connects uh, smart devices. You've heard a lot about that today. Um, next slide. No, just, just keep hitting. Um, let's talk about business model for just a minute. Um, in here, you'll see kind of four classic, completely different ways of making money. It, without those business models, it'll be extremely difficult for us to continue making semiconductors and or systems that actually are profitable. Look at Amazon, who actually figured out how to make, you know, sell a little of a whole lot of things, the, the, the so-called long tail, thank you. eBay, um, you know, nowhere other than India would you think uh, about the need to connect um, in, a, in a virtual way a buyer and seller. At the end of the day, all of this is really much about improving the effectiveness and the efficiency of commerce. Social computing um, has changed dramatically. Um, for any of you that have um, kids of any age uh, beyond diapers, you know that um, they can't live without Facebook. Um, content creation. You know, when, when, when I went to school, it was the library, it was books, it was structured data, um, it was publishers uh, in the hundreds or thousands that actually created the information that people sought. And of course today it is, it is crowdsourced and organically created so that we had this, this tremendous explosion, that this mashup of information that we're all trying to get access to. And it's only the relevant access of that data that creates information value. You've heard maybe a hundred times today about the criticality of mobility, the untethered ability to access information. Um, and I'll, I'll submit in a, in a couple of minutes that while the focus is really on the, on the cell phone when you think about mobility, I mean, I, whether this has a long battery life or not, um, it's only the richness of the information that I can use to improve my life that I care that it lasts longer. It's not just about the battery. It's not about the baseband processor or the apps processor. Um, regardless of what uh, part of Moore's law it takes advantage of it, 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 it exclusively. We've gone dramatically through the last decades in our ability to connect people to people, people to data, and of course now I, I see this tremendous paradigm shift of having information find us in an in intuitive and in, in intelligent way, um, and that's an, an awesome opportunity for services. And finally, of course, you've seen graphs of various varieties um, like this all day. The explosion of data in the exabyte range um, is, needs to be dealt with and, uh, and accessed. So again, I made the comment in about low power, that it's not just about the dumb client. In fact, these are becoming really smart, but the smart really doesn't matter unless it's connected. It's in fact the access to the cloud and interesting and informative analytics that can improve the quality of your life, 
can entertain you, can connect you to uh, someone else where there's value created. And again, in the context of what India has historically been excellent at, there are awesome opportunities to automate and cost effectively mine this data in a way that gets back to this device. The other low power opportunity that we all have, particularly those of you that are working at the physical layer in the semiconductor industry, is low power isn't just important for the battery life of these devices, but it is increasingly the limit to scaling out data centers. For any of you that have actually toured a large data center in the Northwest United States or, 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 or elsewhere, you'll see cargo container loaded modules whose physical dimensions and density of compute power are limited primarily by thermals. There are thousands of interfaces of both physical, hardware, software varieties in those racks that need to be innovated and need to be improved in order to keep scaling. No talk like this is, is complete. Um, th uh, without talking about Moore's Law, this one in particular I, I've always liked. Um, if, you, uh, if I remember way down on that curve when I used to drive with my dad to test vacuum tubes uh, to put back in my black and white TV, um, we've come a long way. And if you extrapolate this curve, it says that uh, when my kids are giving talks somewhere, um, the compute power in the world will have exceeded the brain power of all the people living on Earth. And so maybe that's a stimulating thought to think about uh, before you have a drink at dinner tonight. So let's talk a little bit about just a, a way of looking at small um, but potentially very critical inventions and we then tend to, to, to wrap a chip around that invention. We accommodate and wrap potentially a module or a system and eventually a whole ecosystem accommodating the weaknesses and the strengths um, of that particular invention. And by the time we get way far out where someone actually used, uses that invention, the value may be very, very far away from the idea or the, the, the genesis of that original new, um, new, new idea. The farther that level of abstraction is, the harder it is to establish value. And since we're all ultimately about commerce and moving this forward, um, I would suggest that there's uh, perhaps a more interesting way to look at this problem. You've heard the word ecosystem many times all day. You saw Gary talk about it in terms of putting companies and technology collaborators and partners together. Um, if, if we start outside the circle where the biggest opportunities for service and markets and potential value creation are, out where the globe is in this particular slide, and, and let, let's take India for an example. If we think about the, the, the compelling challenges and opportunities to affect energy, to affect healthcare, to affect education, and then we start pulling back those big problems and challenges. What are the kind of systems, what are the modules, what are the chips that drive them, and what are the micro ingredients below that are required? It's a very, it's a simple construct, but I would submit it's an, it's an interesting dinner conversation um, and an interesting way to think about how we can create relevance. And I think as India searches for a way to match the massive talent and the opportunities for invention to things that matter to drive commerce. That again, taking a local and a domestic view of what is relevant to India at this time and in five years and in 10 years and in 15 years is a way to help focus some extremely interesting things in the future.